الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين أما بعد we continue reading the treaties of Al Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala the treaties entitled Al Usul Al Sitta Al Usul Al Sitta the six principles we begin reading tonight Al Asl Al Rabi' Al Asl Al Rabi' the fourth principle the author he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala Al Asl Al Rabi' bayan al ilmi والعلماء والفقه والفقهاء وبيان من تشبه بهم وليس منهم وقد بين الله تعالى هذا الأصل في أول سورة البقرة من قوله يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي نعمت عليكم إلى قوله قبل ذكر إبراهيم عليه السلام يا بني إسرائيل الآيات he says, وَيَزِيدُهُ وُضُوحًا مَا صَرَّحَتْ بِهِ السُّنَّةُ فِي هَذَا الْكَلَامِ الْكَثِيرِ الْبَيَّنِ الْوَاضِحِ لِلْعَامِّ الْبَلِيدِ ثُمَّ صَارَ هَذَا أَغْرَبَ الْأَشَّاءِ وَصَارَ الْعِلْمُ وَالْفِقْهُ هُوَ الْبِدْعُ وَالْضَلَالَاتِ وَخِيَارُ مَا عِنْدُهُمْ لَبْسُ الْحَقِّ بِالْبَاطِلِ وصار العلم وصار العلم الذي فرضه الله تعالى على الخلق ومدحه لا يتفوه به إلا زنديق أو مجنون وصار من أنكره وعاداه وصنف في التحذير منه والنهي أنه هو الفقيه العالم The author he mentioned that the fourth principle it is the clarification of knowledge in the scholars the clarification of true correct knowledge and the people of knowledge, and the clarification of jurisprudence, fiqh, and the scholars of jurisprudence, the fuqaha, and the clarification of those who resemble them and are not from them. He said, Allah has clarified this principle in the beginning of the chapter of Baqarah from his statement, subhanahu wa ta'ala, O children of Israel, O children of Israel, Remember my favor which I bestowed upon you. And to his statement, O children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you and that I preferred you to the Alameen. And from verse number 40 in chapter Baqarah to verse number 122. He says, to add further clarification, the Sunnah has directly mentioned this with much clear speech from the, uh, for the most ignorant of the layman to understand. Then this became the strangest of things. In this this principle, correct knowledge and understanding. Correct knowledge and jurisprudence became innovation or considered innovation and misguidance and it was to, to the people. And the best of what they had was mixing the truth with falsehood. The knowledge that Allah has made obligatory upon the creation and praised it, no one would mention it except a heretic or one who is insane. And this is how the outcome came with the people. And it became that whoever refuted it, and he refuted the correct knowledge, and opposed it, and authored works warning from it and prohibiting it, then he is the jurist, and he the faqih, and the scholar, the alim. So the author is clarifying this, al-asl al-rabi, a great principle. Aslun kabirun azimun min usuri ahl sunnah A great, magnificent, Important principle from the fundamentals of the people of the Sunnah. Bayan al ilmi wal ulama. The clarification of knowledge, true knowledge, correct knowledge, and the real true scholars, the real people of knowledge. And al fiqh and fuqah and the fuqaha, the correct understanding in the deen, and the true scholars of jurisprudence who derive the correct rulings from the book and from the Sunnah. Likewise, the clarification of those who resemble them or imitate them, but they're not from them. So then we see that there is true knowledge and correct knowledge and understanding in the religion. And there are the people of knowledge that are correct and upright, the sound and pious and righteous scholars and people of knowledge. And then there are those who imitate them and they're not really from them. They imitate them and they're not really from them. 
And we see that the ulama that are upright, al ulama, al rasikhun, al rabbaniyun, lahum sifat. Dhakaraha Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi, wa man tashabaha bihim wa laysa minhum aydan, lahum sifat. Dhakaraha Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi, that the upright scholars, the sound, true, pious and righteous scholars, they have attributes that they are known by way of. And Allah has mentioned them in His book. And likewise, those misguided, ulama su, the misguided and evil scholars, likewise they have attributes that they are known by. And Allah has mentioned them in His book. In many places, particularly the author is mentioning here from these two places in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the beginning, the clarification of true, correct knowledge and the right, upright, and the true, upright scholars and the clarification of the, those who imitate them and that are not from them. This is found in the statement of Allah To the statement right before the mention of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This one is in verse number 40 from Surah Al-Baqarah. All the way right before the mention of Ibrahim, Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions this, this verse again. O children of Israel, So between these verses here, it's approximately 12 pages. The author is mentioning that Allah has clarified the attributes of the people of knowledge and true and correct knowledge. And likewise, He has clarified the attributes of those who resemble and imitate those people of knowledge and they're not from them. And they're not from them. So the first issue, clarification of knowledge. The clarification of knowledge. The clarification of the ulama, the upright and true scholars of this deen. This is of the utmost importance. And from the greatest principles of the deen and of the people of the sunnah. And this also, this principle, it is about the manhaj. المنهج الذي يسير عليه المسلم في تلقي الدين وفي تعلم الدين وفي طلب العلم. This is a principle with regards to the clarification of the methodology of a Muslim. How he will seek knowledge. How he will obtain an understanding in the deen. How he will learn the sunnah. What is the correct knowledge to learn? What is the correct fiqh to learn that is praised, that Allah has praised in his book? And who are the ulama, and what is the manners to take from them? What are their attributes? This is a great principle. And if we ponder over the tartib and the arrangement of these principles so far, we see again the relationship. And if we were to think, what is the first thing that caused the Muslims to go to deviate from the first principle? What's the first principle? Ah. Ikhlas al din لله تعالى وحده لا شريك له وبيان ضده على ليه الشرك بالله نعم what caused the people to deviate from this asl? Uh, lack of knowledge lack of knowledge that's what he mentioned فلما صار على أكثر الأمة ما صار whenever what happened to the majority of the ummah occurred then shaytan أظهر لهم الشيطان الإخلاص في سورة تنك الصريح then shaitan is able to bring in this, his, his deviation. Why? Because of ignorance. Naam? Because of ignorance. So then it's important to have the right knowledge. Because if, not, if, he, if one does not have the right knowledge, then he will be the opposite of that, which is ignorance. And then he was closer to falling into shirk and he does not know it. Closer to falling into innovation and he does not know it. He may think that the shirk is tawheed and tawheed is shirk. Especially if he, with regards to this fourth principle, not only the knowledge, but especially if he did not have the knowledge and he did not know who the true ulama are. Because then, now he's taking knowledge from the wrong sources. And this is what leads the people to worshiping graves. Because they have ulama, ulama su. They're ulama, they teach them that this grave is a, a, a grave of the wali. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he has a, a great status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, you're a sinner. Just, you're not worshipping him. You just go to him and ask him to intercede for, for you. Because he has a high status with Allah. As for you, you're a sinner. You have sins. Like this, slaughter for him. Call on him. Make his with him. Like this, they, they deceive them. 
And then they tell them this is Tawheed. So they're misguided for not having knowledge, the correct knowledge, and then by taking knowledge from the wrong source. If I'm taking knowledge from the wrong source, that's how they start worshiping graves. Taking knowledge from the wrong source. Likewise, with the second principle, the obligation of being united. The obligation of being united. We see in, in our previous class last night that the Khawarij was the first sect to deviate from the straight path. And, and what was their deviation? Where was it at? And their understanding of the text. They're, they're, they have Quran, they have Sunnah. The hukum is only for Allah. This is Quran. They're, they're using Quran. They're using Sunnah as their evidences. But they're not getting their understanding from the proper source. So even though they have the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah, they're not receiving the understanding from the proper source. What did Ibn Abbas say to them? I'm coming from the side of the Sahaba and I don't see none of them with you. In agreements with you and with your understanding and, and with your dispute. I'm coming from the side of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and I don't see them with you. So here they're understanding, they're taking knowledge from other than the correct understanding. So what happened to them? They split and they deviated. And this deviation was, was specifically with regards to the third principle. And they made khuruj against the ruler. And they didn't listen and they didn't obey. So if we look at the fundamental principle uh, and the reason why individuals go astray are many and in the, fund, in, the, in the end it's all in the hands of Allah 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 guides whom He wills and He sends astray whom He wills. But if you look and try to pinpoint the source why are these people going astray we'll see it from this principle right here. In this day why are there people who put bombs on their chest and blow themselves up in the masjid? He's misguided. So, <laughs> but how did he get there? He took knowledge from the wrong source. He thought somebody was an Adam and he's not an Adam. Okay? He, was, uh, he was imitating the Adam. He's not really an Adam. He's imitating the, the Adam. He's not really the Adam. This is the one that that led him away. And this is why he believed that it's permissible to put a bomb on his chest and go to the Masjid al Dhuhr and blow himself up. Because of that misunderstanding of the fourth principle. Taking knowledge from the wrong source. Not knowing who the ulama are. Likewise, if we look at the extreme Sufiya, they gather around and they turn off the lights and they hold their hands. And they say Allah over and over until they say uh, Allah and they're bouncing like this. Why did they do this? Because they have a creed and belief and they believe that this is correct and beneficial. They were taught like this. They sought knowledge from the wrong source. They sought knowledge from the wrong source. They have ulama, ulama su, that are telling them that this is uh, from the deen, that this is from the sunnah, that this is from the way. Like this. So, knowing what is correct knowledge and the proper manner to, ob to obtain it and the avenue to get it and those who have it, who are they? This is very important. This is very important. And the people from the, from, from the Muslims, they go astray because of taking knowledge from the wrong source. You will find somebody who will be upright. Maybe he is from the people of the Sunnah. He starts looking, listening to some people from the Khawarij. He starts listening or seeing the videos on, on the internet from ISIS, for example. Then next thing you know, what is he doing? He went astray. Why? Because of taking knowledge from the wrong source. Taking knowledge from the wrong source. It's very dangerous to take knowledge from the wrong source. It's very dangerous to, to learn about Islam from other than the ulama of the sunnah. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Even in these days we have people that they're, maybe they're claiming salafiyya, salafiyya, ahli sunnah, ahli sunnah. But in reality they're khawadij. In reality they're deviants. In reality they're deviants. This is something that is known. When I was in Egypt, even they had posted on the streets. They said, al-hizb al-salafiyya. -salaf Yani the Salafi party. Yani Hizb. Yani how could it be a faction like this? And then for voting for them and their government. Yani there's a, a group of them running like this and this is what they call their political party. And so the reality is that names, Islamic names, yani nice slogans, they, they're not beneficial if the reality is not behind them. They're, they're of no benefit if the reality is not behind them. And this is something that is found 
in uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was a time whenever there was some from the, uh, an individual from the Mahajirin and an individual from the Ansar. They got into a dispute. They got into a dispute. So what happened? They become angry with each other. So the Muhajir, he says, Ya al Muhajirin, he, he called them. And he got calling them, and he called, Ya al Ansar, they're calling each other these names, Al Muhajirun, what Ansar, these are terms that are found in the Quran. Allah called them Muhajirun. Allah Azza wa Jal called them Al Ansar. These are legislative terms, but in this instance here, they were not using them in the legislative manner. So the point behind that is that even though if it has a claim, Ahl Sunnah, Al Islam, for example, every book that says Islam, every book that says Ahl Sunnah, like this, this is doesn't, this is not indication that the information is correct there. Every website, you should, and to go to the website and just put in Islam or search for a ruling like this, this is not, uh, this is not good. This is dangerous. The websites can be good if we know which ones to go to and which ones to use and which ones are authentic and alike like this. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ heard them calling this, Ya al Muhajirin, Ya al Ansar, like this, he said, Adawa Jahili wa ana bayna adhurikum. Are you calling to the call of Jahiliyyah? And he mean now, now they're not using them in the legislative term that he was using in this manner, like this, like this is my group, and this is my group. Like to come, aid me for, for, for me, not for the haq. Like this. So the point is that whenever the, the terms are, 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 are beautiful terms, Al Islam, Al Sunnah, Ahl Sunnah, Salafiyyah, Ahl Hadith, even sometimes you see Ahl Hadith, there will be a Jamiyyah organization, they call themselves Ahl Hadith. They're the farthest away, might be sometimes to be the furthest away from the people of Hadith and their methodology. So the name itself is not uh, that, the, the, that which is going to identify and clarify the right way, but rather their understanding and the application and their conduct and their manners. This is any of their deeds. This is what's going to clarify that. So to learn the proper knowledge is very important. And to learn who the true ulama are, this is very important. And this right here, this point right here is light for a Muslim. Light for a Muslim. Any Muslim, for example, who come to Islam, or maybe he was born Muslim, but he didn't know about the ulama. After learning about, for example, the ulama of our day, learning about Sheikh Ibn Baz for the first time, and learning about his fatawa and the fatawa and the books of Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. After this, this is like light that he will see being in contact with the ulama, the ulama of the sunnah, the ulama of hadith, the ulama of, uh, 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 of the deen of Allah azza wa jal that are on the upright way. This will bring light into a person's life and he will be able to see the correct way. The, the example that the ulama have made uh, of the ulama is that uh, with regards to the people, the true ulama is, is that of uh, a people ga- traveling together in the wilderness. People traveling in the wilderness. And it's dark. But one of them, he has a torch. What are they going to do? Traveling in the wilderness, in the woods, in pitch dark. Huh? Then all of the, the one that comes with a torch, everybody's going to follow him. If they go without the torch, they might fall into some trees, into animals, into a ditch, into danger. It's dangerous in the woods. It's dangerous to travel in the woods without a light. Here comes one, he has a blazing torch. What is he going to He's going to be in the front. This is the one as the leader. And everybody follows by him. When he stops, they stop. When he goes, they go. And the one who has the blazing torch, the one that is bright, and been burning for years. He has experience in carrying the torch. These are the ulama. These are the ulama. His beard is gray, carrying the torch of light, carrying the sunnah, defending the sunnah. That doesn't mean that he is infallible, but he has experience. And he knows this is the ulama. This is the example of the ulama of our times. We follow him. So what, imagine this uh, gathering here, and they're gathering, and if the, uh, he's carrying the light, what if somebody comes along now with a lighter? He's like, man, leave him, follow me. He gets a little bit of light. This, 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 other, this young guy comes along now, he gets a little bit of light, alhamdulillah. Psh, cracks his lighter, and he said, no, 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 leave the doors, just follow me. What would you say to him? Na'udhu billah. Uh-huh, this person is calling away from the way of the ulama. This is the example. The true light is clear. The true ulama, if we learn their sifat, it will be clear. We will know who they are. We won't be deceived. 
And they're not one or two, alhamdulillah. In our day to day, there are many, alhamdulillah. There are many ulama, kibar. Many ulama, kibar. From the greatest of the kibar ulama today, Shaykh al Fuzan. Uh, from the greatest of the kibar ulama today, Shaykh al Fuzan, he's alive today, alhamdulillah. And his brothers from the ulama. So it's very beneficial to learn who the ulama are and to know who they are. And this is a fundamental principle. If a Muslim does not understand this, then he can go astray easy. He can go astray easy. He can go astray from Tawheed to Shirk easy. He can go astray from Sunnah to Bid'ah easy. He can leave the straight path just like that. He can go from Halal to Haram. Those people who claim to be ulama, they make riba permissible. Huh? They make, they, make, they make usury permissible. Claim, they're claiming that they're the ulama. Na'udhu billah. They make these transactions that are haram, they try to make them permissible. Putting stuff in little writings like this, these different contracts and leases that we have here in America, and they try to say that this is permissible. But the people of knowledge, they know that this is not permissible. But if you're not aware of who the people of knowledge are, the ulama are, the upright scholars are, the upright students of knowledge, then a person might go to the wrong way. Following them. Following them. So the ulama, they have attributes and, and they have characteristics. The good ones and the bad ones. The good ones and the bad ones. This principle is so important. Many of the ulama of our time today, I mean, we can see this principle in effect. How they're, they're, they're the ones who call to Tawheed. And they're the ones who clarify the Sunnah. And they're the ones who call to unification. And they're the ones who call to listening and obeying the ruler. These are from their attributes. From the attributes of the true ulama that they're called us to Tawheed. And they warn from shirk. And that they're called us to the clarification of the Sunnah. And they warn from in, 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 in innovation. And they, they call to unification upon that. They call to ijtima. They don't call to iftiraq. And they have knowledge and they have wisdom. And they call to listening and obeying the ruler. The first three principles, this is because this is what the Prophet ﷺ came with. And these people, these ulama, as-sadiqun, as-sadiqun, al-amilun, hum warathat al-anbiya. They are the inheritors of the, of the Prophets. وَإِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَا لَمْ يُوَرْبِثُوا دِينَارَ مَلَا دِرْحَمًا The Prophet ﷺ said that in the Prophets, they did not leave as inheritance any wealth. Dirham or dinar. وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمِ They left behind knowledge. فَمَنْ أَخَلَهُ أَخَلَ بِحَاذًا وَافِرٌ Whoever got a portion of that, he has a great portion. So these right ulama, they're calling to the way. They're calling to the risala of Allah Azza wa Jal. They're calling to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. They're calling to the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal with clarification. The most important things they're calling to are these first three principles here. This is from their attributes. This is from their way. Today we have people they claim, we see that they're ulama, yani, but they're ulama su. Uh, we've seen the examples of those who call to grave worship. Maybe he has a doctor's degree. He's claiming that you can make istighatha or you can make shafa'a with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or you can make shafa'a with the grave uh, of the Qadr or of the grave of, uh, of Sayyidi Fulan. They have them making these claims. There's, there, there's ulama, any ulama, su, evil ulama, that are telling you that you don't have to uh, shave your beard. I mean, excuse me, you don't have to grow your beard, you can shave the beard. This is all from the old days. They have ulama, they have people that ascribe to knowledge that are claiming this. And things like, and, and worse than that, likewise. And worse than that, likewise. We have today people who have doctor's degrees. People who have tazkiyat from major scholars. And they're calling to Mullah Harat. Today. They're calling to Khuruj on the, on the Hukam. They just did. And we've seen the issue in Syria. There was people who had doctor's degrees, big, and he respected uh, people in society, supposed to be people of knowledge, ulama. And this is what they're calling to. And then we've seen the result of that. But the ulama of the Sunnah, what were they calling to? Don't make Khuruj, isbiru, ilzimu buyutakum. Stay in your homes. I remember this example, and this, is, and he, this occurred. The ulama, they're advising, do not, in the time whenever the, they first started the revolt in, in Syria. They're, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Sheikh Fawzan, all of the ulama are saying, don't make khuruj, don't make khuruj. But they didn't listen to the ulama, the sunnah. What happened? They listened to the ulama, the su. Uh, the callers and the, uh, and the du'at. They're not even ulama, they call, he's, he's not even a alim, they call him now da'iyya. Farqun kabir bain alim wa da'iyya. So what happened? They went to the street. What happened, then after they went to the street, 
The, the, the streets were finished. The streets were finished. What happened now? later? I, wallahi, I, I remember this. I was sitting in the class of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin. This is later after. And they're, and they're invading Hims. And they're invading the towns. And now, they have, now they've been surrounded. And they have nothing left. Now what are they doing now? In this, in this, this desperate situation, now they're contacting the ulama. Now they're contacting. They're sending questions to Sheikh Abdul Muhsin. And his daughters. What are they asking him? Is it permissible for, me, for, for him to kill his daughter so that she won't be raped by them whenever they come and invade them? Wallahi, I heard with my ears in the gathering. In the gathering of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, this is what they're asking. Huh? Is it permissible? Of course, it, of course he said, of course it's not permissible to kill your... To hear so, this is this is not permissible. But this this is the situation they're in now. They're in this little village. They're in a small town. They're completely surrounded. The army is letting them know we're coming in. These people are people. They live. They're they're bakers. They're 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 not army people. They went against the street, and this is the outcome. In the end, this is what happened. They're forced to return to the ulama. But in a sad state like this, is it permissible for him to kill his daughter, for him to kill his wife? Because they're afraid that they're going to get, they're going to kill him and they're, they're going to be in the hands of the Rafiq of the Nusayriya. And what will they do with their daughters? What will they do with their wives? This is the situation they found themselves in. Why? Because they oppose this asl. Aslun adhimun min usuri ahli sunnah. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says about those who oppose what the Prophet came with. فَلِيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُسِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُسِيبُهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ let, those, let them beware those who oppose his command. And the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or else a fitna will befall them or a, a painful punishment. A painful punishment. This is the outcome of what? Breaking these principles. What led to the breaking of these principles? They're taking knowledge from the wrong source. They're taking knowledge from the wrong source. They took the fitwa from a, a, a scholar that is evil and misguided. Sahib Hawa. He's living in nice lands. He's sending his family here to learn. And then he's telling them, go fight in the street. S spill your blood. It's okay. This is a thawrah. Mercy. It's going to be a great outcome and advantage for the Muslims. What happened now? There's no mercy. There's no mercy. It's total devastation. There's nothing except for humiliation now and sadness and grief for the Muslims. Altogether, nobody is happy with the situation. How this ended in this manner. And then the Muslims, they don't learn from this. And they want to start it here in this country. And they want to start it there in that country. All of this because why? They take knowledge from the wrong source. They have a fatwa from a, a, a scholar who is misguided. They're taking knowledge from people who do not deserve to, to speak about knowledge. Who themselves, they are misguided. So then this, this principle is very important. Al-Asl, al rabi Bayan al-ilmi wal-ulama. Bayan al-ilmi wal-ulama. We have to know what is knowledge. What is knowledge? Who are the ulama? Who are the ulama? And in reality, this is just one aspect. But, but the misguidance is many avenues. Misguidance is many avenues. The Prophet he drew the line on the, on the hadith of Ibn Masood. Rasulullah يعني The ways of misguidance are many. Subul, kathira. There's lots of ways of misguidance. Desires, and shubuhats, and innovation, sins, transgression, misguidance, oppression of others, taking people's will. All of this is leaving the straight path. The way to know the clear way path is from knowledge. Holding fast to that, that's the application. Who has the knowledge and where do we get it from? From the ulama. From the ulama. They're the lights, they're the torch. The ulama al-alimun, al-amilun. The ones who know and they apply it. From the greatest attributes of the scholars is that they apply the knowledge that they have. That they apply the knowledge that they have. They have the knowledge of the, of the sunnah. They have the knowledge of the tawheed. They have the knowledge of the book of Allah Azza And they apply it. And they apply it. It's important when we... He's al-ilm. Bayan al-ilm. 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 Knowledge. And he, first we know if ilm is used in, in, in our deen, alhamdulillah, the meaning is al-ilm is shari. And if they ever want any other meaning, they have to make taqeed. They have to restrict it. They have to say, for example, if they want the, the knowledge, the ilm of engineering, that you have to say ilm handasa. 
Or if they want to talk about med- medicine, they say ilm al-tib. You have to make a restriction. But if it's used ultimately or absolutely, mutlaqan ilm. Al-ilm, yani al-ilm al-sharri. Al-ilm bima anzal Allah azza wa jal ala rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadu hu al-ilm. Al-ilm huwa ilm ma anzal Allah azza wa jal ala rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallah azza wa jal anzal al-kitab alayhi wa anzal al-sunnah alayhi. Naam? Allah, the, the true knowledge, what is knowledge? Al-ilm, it is that which Allah has revealed to His Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is knowledge. This is the knowledge. So now that we know what the knowledge is, we have to know who has the knowledge and how to obtain it. Because there are the people of knowledge and there are ways to obtain it. There are people of knowledge and ways to obtain it. If we know what is knowledge and we know who to get it from and we know the avenues to take and traverse upon to get it, then we will have khair and we have barakah. We will have khair in our life and in our family. And those who come in contact with us in our community. Knowledge is light. Anytime there's a community and the knowledge is spread in that community. There's people of knowledge there. This is something that's tried and tested that, you, that we know. We go to a community, we see there's people there, some students of knowledge, one, two, or brothers who have said with the students of knowledge, or brothers, I mean, there's knowledge in the community, alhamdulillah. We see that the evil in that community is less. The evil in that community is less. The backbiting is less, the problems are less. There's always going to be problems, but it's less. The evil spread amongst the community is less. If you go to another community where there's no knowledge there, there's no students there, upright teaching, then what do you find there? You find that people backbiting, you find that people mixing, you find all types of haram actions and conduct. So the knowledge is, is very beneficial. The knowledge is very, very beneficial. And the one who doesn't have the knowledge, he's going to be led astray. And the one who is aware of the knowledge, but he takes it from the wrong source, he's going to be astray. He's going to go astray. And then even then, Akramukum Allah, he knows the knowledge. Quran, Sunnah. Faham salaf And he knows the ulama. But he doesn't take the right steps to get it. This is also going to be a problem. The ulama, they say that the knowledge, it has manners. The knowledge, it has manners. Al-ilm lahu adab. If we don't have the adab of knowledge, then the knowledge can, can be harmful for a person. The first adab of knowledge is that it's obtained sincerely with the intention of applying it. Sincerely for the sake of Allah with the intention of applying it. If the knowledge is obtained without this intention, it would be a wabal on the, on the individual. And a wabal meaning it would be a, 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 an evil outcome. And it will be a proof against the individual. And there will be much fitna that is spread because of this person. The one who obtained the knowledge without the right intention. The one who obtained the knowledge without the right intention, this one will have fitna with him. Around him. And where he goes. The one who obtained the knowledge with the, with, with the right intention, even if he just had a little knowledge, you will find barakah in him. Because why? Because Allah puts barakah in the one who has ikhlas. The one who has ikhlas and he learns what he learns because he wants to obey Allah. He learns like this. This is the intention with the knowledge. I want to know what Allah says in his book so I can apply it. I want to help others be able to apply it. This one right here, you will find barakah in him. Maybe he's not famous, maybe nobody knows him, but the people who do know him, they benefit from him. Whenever he talks to them, they benefit. This is the case of the one who has the knowledge and he's upright. This is the first case. From the, uh, from the issues of knowledge, that he has taqwa, a taqwa with the knowledge, and that he fears Allah. The author, he mentioned that these attributes of those upright scholars, they're found in these chapters. They're found in these chapters. So from the first thing that he mentioned in the verse of Allah, Ya Bani Israel, اُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ أَلَّتِي نَعْمْتُ عَلَيْهُ وَأَنِّي فَضْوَلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ So these ulama, what do they do? They're people of dhikr and people of shukr. The people of dhikr remembering Allah Azza wa Jalla, remembering the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their people of shikr, they're applying that in the best manner. Trying to please Allah Azza wa Jalla and show thanks. Then what did he say after that, the next verse? Huh? Where's the hufat? <coughs> La. 
before the first verse. Ya Bani Israel, uthkuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni fadlatukum ala al-alamin wa aminu bima anzaltu musaddiqan lima ma'akum wa la tukunu awwala kafirin bi. Naam? Then what he said after that? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَشْجَرُوا بِعَيَاتِ ثَمَنٍ قَلِيلًا وَإِيَايَ فَرْحَبُونَ So from the, from the sifat of the evil scholars that يَشْجَرُونَ بِعَيَاتِ اللَّهِ They are learning the, uh, the verses of Allah Azza wa Jal for a reason of the dunya. To gain status, to gain rank. There right there is one of the first signs of the ulama is su. They want status, they want rank. يَشْجَرُونَ بِعَيَاتِ اللَّهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا They're buying, purchasing by the prices, what? The verses of Allah Azza wa Jal. They're learning the deen, they're learning the knowledge, they're learning the sunnah, but they don't want to do this for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Rather, they want to have a portion in the, de- in the dunya. They want to be praised, they want to have a rank, they want to have status, they want the people to look at them and praise them. MashaAllah, he knows so much, MashaAllah, recites so good. يَشْتَرُونَ بِعَيَاتِ وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِعَيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَإِيَّايَ فَرْحَبُونَ Rather, the contrary to that, فَرْحَبُونَ أَيْ فَخْشَوْنِي Fear me. الْخَشَّةِ So then from the greatest sifat of the ulama, ha, sunnah ulama al-sadiqeen, ha, الْخَشَّةِ And that's why the ulama, they mention it, it's been narrated on, on, on Ibn Masood رضي الله عنه that he said, يَنِي كَفَ الْمَرْءُ عِلْمًا أَنْ يَخْشَى اللَّهِ عز وجل. It's sufficient that a person to have, for a person to have knowledge that he fear Allah Azawajal. That he fear Allah Azawajal. What does it mean to fear Allah Azawajal? It means that he will try to obey Him with his tongue. He will try to obey Him with his ears. He will try to obey Him with his hands. This is what he would do. He will be afraid to disobey Him with his tongue. If he slipped, he would feel bad. If he slipped with his eyes, he would feel bad. وَإِيَّا فَرْحَبُونَ They have iman in what Allah has revealed. And they apply it and they fear Allah Azza wa Jalla. These are from the greatest attributes. Whenever we see a person who ascribes to knowledge and he doesn't apply it, then this is a major calamity for him. And for those who come in contact with him. And for those who come in contact with him. Now, So the author, he's going to clarify. Uh, uh, excuse me, he mentioned uh, in these verses. What we want to do for this class, inshallah, there's homework for next week. For anybody who wants to participate. For anybody listening who wants to participate. I encourage. Read these verses. From where? Chapter 40. Because the author is telling us what? Huh? بَيَّنَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى هَذَا الْأَصْلِ What's the asr? Al-ilm, wal-ulama, wal-fiqah, wal-fuqaha. Allah clarified this principle and the fi awwali surat al-baqarati min qawlihi from his statement subhanahu wa ta'ala O children of Israel remember my bounty upon you and my favor upon you huh? from uh, chapter 40 that excuse me verse 40 to his statement after that verse 122 mention the same thing ya bani israil athkuru uthkuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni fadlatukum ala alamin Naam, from verse 40 to verse 122. We can see the fiqh of this imam, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and then his pondering over the Qur'an. He's telling us right now, that all of these verses, from this verse 40 to 122, it begins like this, O Bani Israel, O Bani Israel. All of this is about the people of Israel and the children of Israel. Allah is addressing them directly. But he's telling us, this author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, this great imam and scholar, that in this address to them is a clarification who the ulama are. And what is real knowledge? And what, who the fuqaha are? And what is true fiqh? And what is contrary to that from those who imitate the ulama and that are not from them? And those who imitate the fuqaha but they're not from them? He's saying that it's in these 12 pages here. The clarification. So that means that he must have, rahimahullah, read these pages and pondered in detail to come with this uh, understanding. So then read... As the homework, read these pages in Arabic, in English, in Arabic and English, whatever the case may be, the language that one understands. And see where you can find attributes of the people of knowledge in these. After this, Allah is watching, after this verse, also in the very beginning, Allah mentioned, He says, So here, another a point that the ulama, they are what? They're people of piety. They have, they have piety and they have taqwa. What does Allah say after that? For example, 
have given you a, a, a jump start. <laughs> Ah, that's it. ولا تلبس الحق بالباطل وتكتم الحق وأنتم تعلمون. Do not mix up the truth with the falsehood. That's from the sifat of who? The ulama asu. Ulama asu. What do they do? يلبسون الحق بالباطل. That they mix up the يعني يخلطون. They mix up the falsehood with the truth. They don't come with the falsehood like this. Take it. They don't come with the bid'ah like this, take it. Or they take the bid'ah and they put it in the clothing of the truth. And then the people who don't know, they don't have the true knowledge and they're not in contact with the true ulama, they may be deceived. They may be deceived. From the sifat of the, uh, those who imitate the scholars but they're not from them, is that they do what? They have kitman. They, they conceal and they hide the knowledge. So here we see that Allah is mentioning these verses. That's clarifying who the ulama are. Clarifying their attributes and their descriptions. Clarifying who those who imitate the ulama. And if these are people, they have knowledge. They have knowledge. They have knowledge. وَيَكْتُمُونَ الْعِلْمِ لِأَغْرَاضِ شَخْصِيَةِ But they, they decorate or they mix up the falsehood with the truth. Why? They have, a, they have uh, worldly uh, desires and goals. They conceal the truth while they know. Why? Because they have personal aims and hopes to gain. This is the case. To know these attributes is very important. To know these people is very important. To be on the straight path means that you're on the path of the people of the straight path. This is the case. They have sifat, they have attributes, they have conduct, they have manners, they, they have uh, characteristics. These people that are on that path, yes, they can be known. You can meet a person and not even speak to him for only a second, inshallah. And understanding this sifat, you all know he's from those people on the straight path. Likewise, you can meet somebody and have a few conversations, a few uh, talk with him, and you can realize that he's, he's not somebody on the straight path. Few words, conduct and manners. He's not on the straight path. And we have to be careful because these people that come, the ulama is su. They don't come just, I mean, they, they, they look like they're... They, they dress like the people of, uh, of the ulama. They act like the people of the ulama. They might even sit in the gatherings of some of the ulama like this, but they're not from them. This is dangerous. How do we know them? By the sifat. This is the fourth principle. And this is where the people go astray. What do we say about the khawarij? Why do they go astray? They took knowledge from the wrong place. Why did the Sufis go astray? They took knowledge from the wrong place. Why did the Ikhwan Muslim go astray? They took knowledge from the wrong place. They took knowledge from the wrong place. The ulama, they mentioned like this, a statement, Shaykh Ali al-Haddadi, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. He mentioned, he said, maybe somebody will study Al-Aqeedah al-Wasitiyah. Al-Aqeedah al-Wasitiyah. What book is that? Creed, Asma'i wa Sifan. This is, this is a kitab, Salafi, Jiddan, by, by, by uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. This is a, but he said if they study that book with an Ikhwan person, Ikhwani person, he's going to be Ikhwani. He's going to come out like this. He's going to be a, 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 a Hizbi. Why? Because he studied this book at the hands of this man that has a misguided intention. He has, he has Aghraad, he has... Uh, and he has shahwa. He wants something other than the deen of Allah. He wants something other than the pleasure of Allah. He wants to follow the goal of his, of his group like this. So taking knowledge is very important. Learning where to get the knowledge from is very important. If a person knows the knowledge but he gets it from the wrong source, he can easily be misguided like that. Bayan al-ilmi wal-ulama. Now, so again, those who go astray from the ummah, from the ummah of Muhammad, did, this, we can pinpoint back here to this, this source right here, the main cause. The main cause that led the people to leave their homes and their communities and go to ISIS. What is the main cause? 
There's a lot of factors, but what is the main thing? They take knowledge from the wrong source. They take knowledge from the wrong source. He's going to go to a grave and he's going to ask the grave uh, for a, a baby. His wife can't have babies yet. He goes to the grave and asks the grave to uh, provide a baby. He slaughters for the grave. Why? What led him to this? His natural creed, la. <laughs> the Quran and Sunnah, la. Ha, the ulama, as He took knowledge from the wrong source. He took knowledge from the wrong source. A brother prays in the masjid all the time. Maybe he's in the front row. May Allah protect us all and our families from his guidance. But this is something that we see. And next thing you know, he's on the news. He did something with a gun in the mall or, or, or a knife or the likes like this. We see these things in America, in Britain. Next thing you know, this, this is the, what, what happened to him. He's taken knowledge from the wrong place. He's taken knowledge from the wrong Where did he get these ideas, this extremism? How did it come in? What led him to this? Taking knowledge from the wrong place. Taking knowledge from the wrong place. How did they slid into groups? This one's W, and this one is Ikhwani, and this one is Mu'tazili, and this one is Qadari. How, how did this, where did the Mu'tazili come from anyways? He slid away from the ulama. Huh? He slid away from al Hazan al-Basri. And then they became what? Mu'tazila. From them they came. There's Jahmiya, and there's Qadariya, and there's al Jabariya. All of this splitting. Why? Because they slid away from the ulama, the, the correct way, they take knowledge from the wrong source. They take knowledge from the wrong source. This is a very, very important point that the Muslims must understand in general. Ahl Sunnah specifically. And the brothers on the Manhaj even more to be worried about their children, where they take knowledge from. Where they take knowledge from. And then on top of that, subhanAllah, even these devices sometimes, this knowledge... Maybe they're not even looking at deen. Maybe they're looking, for example, at uh, something they say is science. These people are atheists. They put their atheism in their science program and their nature program. Look at this is Mother Nature. Like this. They, they, they forget about Tawheed. All of this is uh, education. It's very dangerous where we get our knowledge from. It's very dangerous where our children are, are, are learning from. This is something that we have to be concerned about. Where is my knowledge coming from? Where are my children learning their knowledge from? In the manner like this. This is a great fundamental principle. This is the fourth principle. If a person did not understand this principle properly, it will be a means for him to, to deviate from the straight path. To deviate from the straight path. It will be a means for him to deviate from the straight path. To leave off Tawheed. To leave off Sunnah. Why did he leave our sunnah? He took the knowledge from the wrong source. So then we ask the question, what is knowledge then? I mentioned earlier again, what is knowledge? Hmm. Now. The, 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 the knowledge is that which was, was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say, ma anza, ma anza Allahu azza wa jal ala rasulihi. Allah, he mentioned وَأَنزَلَهُ مِنْ the Quran وَأَنزَلَهُ بِعِلْمِ uh, He revealed it with his knowledge. It's revealed. So the knowledge, the true knowledge, al-ilm, al-sahih, al-shari, al-sahih, al-ilm, this is what came from the heavens. It descended to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It didn't start here. The ulama, they said the proper creed and the proper belief. Al-ilm, what is al-ilm? Al-ilm is al-iman, al-i'tiqad, al-sahih. This is ilm, this is wahi from Allah, azawajal, revelation. It is iman, sincere, true, correct faith, the proper creed and belief. This is knowledge. Where it came from, Allah, azawajal, it came from the heavens. Allah anzalahu. And al-ilm al-sahih huwa al-munazzal min inda... It came from the, it was revealed and it came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other at the end, all the other religions, they're what? They come from the earth. And these at the end, they come from the earth. Christianity didn't come from the heavens, it came up from the earth. Uh -huh, that's what they say. Nabatat. Hadil adiyan nabatat min al ard. Amma ad-deen al islam al sahih sunnah nazrat. Ha'anzal Allahu. Azza wa Jalla Quran wa Sunnah. This is the correct religion and the correct way and the correct knowledge. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.